Hey, Opposing Good Day, everybody. This is Sports Center News. I'm Joe Borg, and this is going to be a preview to the Battle of Alberta Game 3 as we had scoring galore in Game 1 and then eight total goals in Game 2. As for the Oilers, they were able to match the um, Flames far significantly better. In this game, as in Game 1, they allowed way too many high-octane chances and almost 50 shots and were fortunate to be able to have that rally to come back but then fell after Anderson was able to score the winning goal pretty much a minute after Yamamoto nailed it up. But in Game 2, um, Mark Stone was able to slam one home for the Flames. And then Richie was left open in front as Keith, for some reason, left his assignment to go up. But then Keith made up for it as he got the nice one-handed pass from McDavid to be able to wire one home. To Foley then got the power play goal that Lindholm made the nice pass over to him. McDavid, after he and Dre had a play that was a disallowed goal for goalie interference, was able to then have a very nice move that Dreisaitl and Keith were able to get the assists on there as well. This was probably by far, not probably, but by far hands down after that boneheaded mistake early in leaving Richie Wright open the best game for Duncan Keith in the playoffs as Keith then got the assist over to Bouchard, slamming it home from the point, and Hyman was able to score the decider the shorthanded goal, and then on one that Zadorov should have blocked down, but he missed on the ring around the boards by Mike Smith. Dry settle, bad ankle or not, was able to seal it to win it. So you would have to think coming into Edmonton, Alberta, coming into playing at home, the Oilers are coming in with the ante and the momentum in this one. But this series is just so tough to pet because you would have thought the Flames had it in inroads, and I'm sure even Oilers fans thought that in that first game, oh, this game's done. And then there was that comeback to then have Anderson score a minute later. So this series is kind of a tough one to peg. There was bad goaltending all around in Game 1. In Game 2, I wouldn't really say there was bad goaltending because that Toffoli goal was just a ridiculous play. And then Stone was able to get it back, so that's a tough reactor. Mike Smith might want that back, but it's tough to react to that when one shot's blocked. And then he wires it right away again. And then when it comes to... Markstrom, I mean, that one goal by McDavid, you're not saving that. The goal by Keith wasn't the best ability to be able to protect, one, the net front on Keith cutting in, and two, being able to easier said than done, right? But being able to limit Connor McDavid behind the net. So I think that game wasn't much on the goaltending. I thought it was just, there was a lot of guys left open by the defenses, particularly in the middle of the ice, which is the high-octane scoring areas. So it's going to be interesting to see if the game ends up going that way again where both teams are just getting a lot of chances and shots on goal dead even in a shots last game at 40 or if it's one where because the momentum of the Oilers being able to make that comeback and winning that game they're able to kind of have minus the fall of the Flames falling asleep and then the Oilers come back more of a start of that first game for the Flames because they're riding high on their momentum those would kind of be the two most likely scenarios for me because this series seems to be one that might just be the most offensive of any of the series and it's just going to be like an over under of eight each game where then that's likely going to be more like just a game two where each team gets good chances and Mike Smith was able to <clears throat> prevail last game being the sharp pretender over Jacob Markstrom and also the Oilers as the game went on uh, particularly especially after they got that shorthanded goal uh, by Hyman to really get the momentum going in the direction uh, I would say at that point in the final 10 of the third, and even in the third particularly, they played better defense than most of the postseason and were able to have a decent closeout. And that was the better closeout than you've seen from them in terms of their defensive side offense. You know the Oilers are always going to be able to still push. The defensive side of things, I think that was much better. It wasn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it was much better than you're no used to seeing normally by the Edmonton Oilers. So the key would be continue to play that type of defense that they did in the closeout and just be tight enough because neither of these teams have seemed to play very sound defensive games, obviously, in the first two games of the series as there was eight total goals and then a million total goals in the first game. So it's about who I think just plays freaking sharper on defense. It ended up being the Oilers' last game. And what goaltender continues to play well. Obviously, Smith compared to Markstrom, takes more pressure off his defense playing the puck, but Markstrom's the superior goaltender in net to Smith, so there, so obviously there's that. But I think the Oilers, the key for them in this game, if the Flames score the first goal on the road, I think that's going to be able to get the Flames, the momentum just have a soaring game for them, where in contrast, I think it's just a, one of those games, whoever gets the first one, obviously last game that didn't come to fruition, and the Oilers are able to come back. But I do think 
if the Flames are able to kind of get that first punch on the road and come off to a hot start, I think they're going to ride the silence of the crowd and the cheering of their fans that came over from the other side of Alberta there in Calgary to be able to just keep that going. If the Oilers score the first goal, I think they're just going to, that place is going to get so loud and they're going to kind of drown out any of the Flames fans that are there that the, all the momentum is just going to quickly go to Edmonton and they're going to be able to ride that hot wave. So I do think this game, I don't, I think just because it's been so offensive, it is going to come down to who can ride that hot wave momentum early, and I think it's going to come down to who can get the first goal. Unless if the first goal is one team's kick and the other's behind, and because of a fortunate bounce, it goes for the first goal being to the other team, that's a little bit different. But if it's a normal pace of play, I think it kind of goes to whoever gets the first goal in this game. I think it's going to keep riding the momentum. And if Edmonton is able to get this win, I think they sure as hell have a good chance to then win this series going up two to one in the first game at home. I'm not gonna I don't I'm not changing my prediction. I still have the Flames as my prediction, but the percentage chances, as I said in past videos, where I would say they were at like twenty percent for me because I thought the Flames had a more well rounded team defensively and in cage, but that's not coming to fruition in the first two games of the series, so to speak. So I think this game is crucial. I feel like whoever wins game three here honestly might have a good chance to be the series winner in this one but we're gonna have to see what happens going forward this has been a prediction and preview video well more just a preview video for game three in the battle of alberta against the calgary flames and edmonton oilers stay safe with everybody and enjoy the game please subscribe down below up above on the easy to use widget to keep the channel growing to the goal of 250 or more by the start of june